In this short video, I want to highlight why dividends are such a key part of stock market investing. It's all too easy to assume that buying shares is all about making profits, buying low and selling high. And whilst that's quite important, income is an equally important component of your long-term returns. Now, income investing isn't the most exciting part of investing, but I don't have a problem with that. I just want to highlight what investing is and what it isn't. Economist Paul Samuelson said, investing should be like watching paint dry or grass grow. If you want excitement, take $800 and go to Las Vegas or stick it on the horses, okay? Proper income investing, reinvesting dividends, taking a long-term view, diversifying your portfolio, isn't the most exciting stuff on the planet, but it is the way, potentially, to grow some fairly serious long-term returns. I'll show you what I mean by that in just a moment. So, why do we like dividends? Why is investing not just about buying low and selling high capital gains, the, the more exciting side of things, if you like? Well, a few points here. First of all, dividends represent an actual rather than promise return. The beauty of dividends is that companies sit down, let's say every 12 months, allocate a proportion of their profits as a cash dividend and actually pay it to you. So unlike um, capital gains, which are all kind of paper-based, you know, what will happen in the future, will I, won't I get my profits out, dividends are an actual steady cash return. And that requires a certain amount of management focus. In order to run a business in a way that generates steady cash dividends, you need to be on top of what's called working capital, you need to be on top of cash flow, and I like that. Improved communication, um, shareholders get very stroppy, quite correctly, if dividends are cut or worse still cancelled. So firms that pay regular steady dividends tend to have to talk to their shareholders in a reasonably open manner to avoid a share price pummeling of the type I'll illustrate in a moment. They can be reinvested and they can seriously add to your long-term overall returns. But judgment's required. Do not think that income investing is about finding the biggest income genera generating dividend payer in the market and just sitting on that. Why not? Well, quick quiz question, whose share price graph is this between 2007 and early 2013 with that spectacular crunch roughly in the middle? The answer is BP. At the time, back here, the easily the biggest company in the market, the most generous dividend payer, and of course that catastrophic oil spill suddenly put them in all sorts of trouble. Share price, more or less, uh, halved, dividends cut, and so on and so forth. So it just goes to show that even the biggest, most generous dividend pairs, the most solid looking companies, can get it wrong. So don't back one horse is what I'm saying here. A proper diversified portfolio of income generating stocks is what you're after. But let's just focus on why income is so important in this video. So let's look at uh, why we need to focus on income. Let's take 100 pounds in equities invested in 1945 on two bases. One, invest in the stock market just looking at capital only, and two, looking at capital plus income reinvested. In other words, your income's not coming out to be spent as you receive dividends, it's going back into buying more shares. And the numbers are pretty impressive. So, uninflation adjusted, if you like, in nominal terms. Capital only, 100 pounds in 1945, According to the Barclays Equity Guild Study 2013, that would have risen to £8,011, but in real terms, more like 238. So the point is, adjust that number for inflation, and suddenly £100 becomes 238. That's still more than double, but let's now look at the income side of things. On a nominal basis, you're reinvesting any income you receive. The £100, remember that's the benchmark in all cases in 1945, becomes more like £147,000 and on an inflation-adjusted basis are still fairly impressive, £4,397. So really trying to reinforce the point that over the longer term, income matters and reinvesting income so that you maximise the power of compounding, a force I deal with in an earlier video, vitally important. Right, let's pin that down now to the FTSE 100 and then take a look at the FTSE mid-cap or the mid-250. The point I want to make here is that you shouldn't necessarily limit your search for decent income to just the obvious big dividend payers. Well, let's start there. Let's start with the FTSE 100, right the way back from more or less inception, 85, all the way through to October 2013. The cutoff at the end is less important than the overall trend. Okay, going to do two comparisons. Capital only, 
Not bad. Total return. That's capital plus income. Watch what happens. Okay. There is the total return line traveling up to 4885. That's just an index level. And here's the capital only line traveling up to 6721. You might think, well, wait a minute, capital only looks better. But this is all about where we start from. Let's put those in now. Capital only. The index started back here at 1412. So not bad. Up to 62, sorry, 6721, comparing that number to that number. That's around five times your original investment, if you like, just looking at the change in the index over that time. The factory in income, and here's the big one, the total return index started at only 356 and has climbed to 4885. All right, and that's a much more impressive change. That's more like 13 times your original investment. Okay, 13 to 14 times your original investment. So that's the point about income. And also, notice these two lines roughly track each other, but one is less bumpy than the other. The bottom fatter line is slightly less bumpy. So income reinvestment also reduces the overall volatility of your returns. Okay, let's pick up that point I made about not always limiting yourself to the, the big obvious income pairs. Let's extend that to the FTSE 250. That's the kind of mid cap stocks, the next 250 biggest outside the FTSE 100 and take a look at the same sort of comparison. Capital only and total return. Now, this time, okay, there goes your capital only line. All right, starting off at 1477, ending up at 15466. Not bad, that's gone up around sort of 10 times, 10 and a half times if you like, don't even be too scientific about it. But now, let's have a look at the total return line, the fatter line, kicking off at 373, climbing to 10,195, and that is something like a 27-fold increase. All right, so you can see again the power of income and income reinvestment. And again, you'll notice that the line on the bottom is slightly less volatile than the line on the top. So there you have it. The, the single message I've tried to get across in this video is that as an equity investor, you must not ignore the power of income compounded over time, reinvested over time. And hopefully the point's gone home in this video that, in simple terms, profits may be fiction. You never know until you cash in your shares whether you're going to make a profit or not, whether it's dividends, a hard fact.